Okay, let's take a look at that uh, homework from last night. I just asked you to do the odds, right? Is that right? Okay. So, let's, uh, let's have that out. We just had, wanted to do the odds. Let's see how we do with it. All right. It's a newer concept. It's a brand spanking new concept that you would not have seen before. So let's make sure that you feel comfortable with it. But the nice thing is, is it's always done the same way. So number one, is it okay if I do all three? So problem number one, we have uh, f at x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 5. So remember, we want to put this in vertex form, right? Vertex form hands us the vertex, agree? So a good thing to do is maybe just change that to y equals for right now. And that's always good practice because f at x becomes kind of confusing to look at, but it means the same thing as y. Okay, so is my what is my a value up there right now? One, right? So if my a value was anything other than one, I have to divide all four terms, including y, by whatever the a value is, but it's one, so I don't have to do that. What was the next step after? So, so this first step was check a value. If not one, then divide all four terms by it. Okay, and that'll make more sense on a, a later a later question. I think number five has one that's like that. Okay, uh, the next step that was not really a huge mathematical step. Oh, what's up, babe? Hey, can I take that quiz from yeah. last Friday? Did, had you taken it already or no? No, I have not taken it. Cool. That one? Yes. Cool. You can just chill in the back. Thanks, yo. Yeah, buddy. All right. So what was the very next step? It was not really mathematical. It was like this big idea, but it's not really mathematical. Make it a space, right? All right. Can everybody see the space I made? Does that make sense? Okay, so you're going to do half your B term and square it. Be sure to add and subtract it. Okay, so that seems a little goopy right now, but let's do this. So I can take this and I can go here, right? So that's the next step, and this comes straight down. This sign comes straight down. So I take half of my B term, agree? Half my B term, right? And then square this, square two. Two squared is four, so it's positive four. So if I add it, I also subtract it. So let me pause. It's a bigger, bright idea, right? So the reason I do this is this portion right here, this portion right here is called a perfect square trinomial. So if I were to take x minus 2 and x minus 2, because I have it squared, so there's two of them. If I foil it together or double distribute, I get what's in the yellow. Okay. So if I did the math here on this, if I foiled that out, I would get that right there. But then I have a little bit more arithmetic to take place up here. So what is positive 5 minus 4? 5 minus 4? One. 1. It's now in vertex form. So remember the vertex form looks like this, where my h, my opposite h value, and my same k value is my vertex. OK, so what's my vertex here have to be? Do what? Positive 2 and? Positive 1. Yeah, there you go. And then you could go ahead and graph it, but it didn't ask the graph. It just said, hey, put it in vertex form. Okay? So this is a bigger idea. 
and they're always going to be done the same way over and over and over. Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm going to grab this right here. Let's do this, grab this. That looks good. And I'm going to go copy. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to paste it now. So we have my rules. Let's see. Can you let me move all my rules over? Yes. Hang up. Okay, cool. We got them there. Okay, we're going to use the same rules. Same rules. So let's look at, was number three the next one we did? Is that right? So problem number three oops, is y equals x squared minus 6x plus 10. Good so far? What's my a value up there? What's the lead coefficient on x squared? One. one. So I don't have to divide everything by one, do I? So we can move on to the next step. Next step was what? Make the space. Everyone want to see the space? Is that right? So remember, this is going to work down to here. So x, that comes down. So that sign right here will always be that same sign there, squared. All right, so I'm going to do what next? It's in the green. So what's my B term, Adler? It's just six. It's just the number. So what's half of six? Three. So that goes here. I'm going to square it, and I get what? Three squared is? And if I add it, what else do I do? Subtract it from over here. Okay? We answered, done all those questions so far? Okay? So again, if I, how many x minus 3s are right here? Two. If I had x minus 3 and x minus 3 right next to each other, and I multiplied them together, or I foiled them together, or I double distributed them, I would get this. So this... And this are the same thing. This is just the factored version of that. Okay? But then I have to take care of the rest of the arithmetic. What else do I have to take care of? 10 minus 9, which is? 1. One. What's my vertex? Uh, Rook. 3, 3 comma 1? Yeah. Perfect. So it's opposite inside. Because it was a negative 3 here, it has to be positive here. That's a positive 1. It stays the same sign. There's my, my vertex. So again, it's the same type of routine. You're doing it over and over again. It's just you're using different numbers. You doing all right? Yeah. Wait, is this a new concept? Brand new concept taught it yesterday. Okay, fine. Okay. So it's good good yesterday, and then this is kind of the same way we're going through it. And we will always ask those three, do those three questions off the right. Yeah. Why do we do it like in vertex form, not just like off the um, So vertex form is actually the accepted form that they use in sciences and further on in math classes. It's the more preferred form. Why is it the more preferred form? I don't know. I wasn't at the meeting. That like just worldwide though. It's the what it's the accepted way to do it. Cool? No subject to this one after the All right. Number five is the next one. Yes? Okay. Number five, we have uh, f of x. Oh, let's do this first. Paste. Maybe here. Oops. Same questions, right? Okay, so f of x equals 2x squared minus 8x and plus 10. So the only thing I'm going to change before we start any of the problems, I'm going to change f of x to y. Is that okay? Okay. 
Okay, what's the big difference between this one and the last two we just did? Yeah. To where? What what letter is it? What what letter is it? A, right? Right? A? Make sense? Okay, so check A value. If not one, then divide all four terms by it. So what am I, am I going to divide all four terms by? Two. One term, another term, another term, another term. Agree? So I have one, two, three, four terms. Yes? So I'm going to divide all four terms by two. And I can reduce them if I need to. So y over two just stays y over two. Y over two is not the same thing as y, is it? It's half of y. So we have to keep that in mind. Uh, does this reduce down to just x squared? Yeah. Is that okay? What does this reduce to? Negative four x, is that okay? So that's because of four, that's a one. What does this become? Five. Five? Are we okay so far? Yeah. Everybody see what we just did? Now, here's the nice thing. I don't have to worry about that two until the very end of the problem. I'm going to do the rest of this problem the exact same until the very last step, okay? All right, so what was my next step after that? The non-mathematical term was uh, make a space. Is that okay? So again, this is going to go along with this. Remember, this term, that sign right there, if that was a positive, it would be a positive. It's because it's negative, it's going to be negative. Okay? What is half of 4? 2. two. What is 2 squared? 4. four. If I add 4, I also subtract, subtract four. 4. So this right here... This right here is a perfect square trinomial, meaning if I were to take x minus 2 and multiply it by x minus 2, because I have two of them, if I multiply it out, double distribute, foil it, it's going to come out to the, those two yellows are equivalent statements. Okay? There's a little bit more math that I have to do. What's that? The two. Not before the 2. Subtract 4 from 5. Subtract 4 from 5. So do that math. So 5 minus 4 is 1. Okay? Is that okay? Hey, do you remember that 2? Remember that one? We did everything about this problem the exact same. We had that 2 kind of like sitting off to the side. That 2 is like your little brother or sister you take to the mall. You remember that you took them to the mall, and doggone it, you better remember to take them home, right? Mom, dad, sister, brother, someone's going to get mad at you, right? So I want, this is, right now, this is y divided by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this term by 2, this term by 2, and this term by 2. So watch what happens. That cancels. Those cancel. That just leaves me my y. It's just going to sit out front right there. It's not going to change anything about this. But then 1 times 2 is 2. So what is my vertex? Two. two, so it's opposite here, two, same here, two. Did that two out in the very front influence my vertex at all? No. You know what that two does? It changes my pattern graph from one, three, five to two, six, ten. That's all it does. It does not change the vertex at all. Yeah? Wait, I don't get what the pattern is. Like, what does this do? This is called, this is changing standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, into vertex form. That's all it is. It's called completing the square. Because you're making a perfect square trinomial is the square that you're, we're talking about. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do me a favor. Will you, you all have that assignment in front of you? Will you try number two? I'll give you three minutes to try number two. Three minutes to try number two. Three minutes, try that number two on your page.
I'm just going to kind of go kind of slow. So if you get stuck, I will be going along with this a little bit. The first couple of steps if you're getting stuck. Finishing up, take a look up there. Do you agree or disagree with my work? See if you can go through it in the next 30 seconds. Go through my work, shovel check your work. Does it, is it similar? I mean, I have a highlighted portion, don't highlight yours. And if you want to, you can, but you don't have to. So while you're doing that, quick question. Is there anybody in here right now that did not take that sleep survey? Remember I asked you to get your Chromebooks or do it on your phone? Remember the sleep survey? We did it last week. Is there anybody who did not do it? You didn't do it? You didn't do it? Do it? Will you guys grab a Chromebook and find the email? No, so you might not have the email, so they will share the email with you so you can uh, um, do the sleep survey. Is that all right? The Chromebook card is open. Grab a Chromebook, please, and uh, take care of that if you didn't do the sleep survey. If you were here that last week and you did it, great, but you can go ahead and do it right now. Are there questions on this problem? Yeah. Wait, um, how did you get 25? Okay, because I go half of the x term, so I go half of 10, which is 5. Then I go 5 squared, so 5 times 5 is 25, so I add it and subtract it. Well, you always add it and then subtract it? Uh-huh. Okay. Wait, or if we share that email with Zoe, she probably didn't get it because she sure. might not have been here when it was emailed to you guys. But Zoe, check your school email. Log in your MyCherry Creek, check your school email, see if it's there. It's called something like uh, start time survey or sleep survey, something like that. Something about survey. We good so far? How did you get a negative 55? Uh, negative 30 minus 25 is negative 55. Combine like terms. Oh, okay. We good? All right, will you all try number four? Try number four. Try number four, please. And I'll do it the same way. Go ahead and try it, please. Go ahead and try it, please. Hey, this one didn't find a, na a home? It's no namer? Oh, I have one. You have one? While you're working it, I'll go ahead and do it. So, but double check it. Some of you are off task.
Am okay? Yeah. So to get negative three, do you just combine negative two and negative one? So I owe somebody two dollars, I owe somebody oh. else a dollar, I owe them three dollars. Any other questions on this one? <clears throat> Problem number six. Problem number six. Problem number six. Go ahead and try number six. Number six will refer be look like number five. So we're gonna have to divide, right? So that's the first step. Notice I left it as a fraction. six. Seem okay? It's a, dot, a different thought process. Do you agree? It's not something that's just like cut out. It's like, okay, there is a regimented routine of if I go this to this to this to this. Actually, I'm not done with that problem yet. My vertex is wrong. What did I forget to do? I forgot to multiply everything by that three. Shoot. It's kind of important. Multiply that by three, that by three, and multiply that by three. So then, That's a little nicer, isn't it? Seem okay? Yeah. So, so you have like the fraction, right? You have in the blue, you have one third. Uh huh. And it was minus one originally. So right here, right here. Oh yeah. That was a minus one because I went. Uh, plus one minus one, and I turned one into three over three because that's the same thing as one. So now I have a common denominator. So one minus three is negative two over three, and then the threes cancel out at the very end and multiply everything by three. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So that's the same. Thank you. 
Okay, make sure your name is on that and hand that forward. And if you're handing anything else forward, make sure your name is on that as well. Boy, can you go across and pick those up for me, please? Oh, yeah. I get all the homework. Everyone good? He did. I, I think it was, he had a, he told me that because uh, his brother has his period off, just so they, sound, sounded good to me. I don't know. Okay, Um. so this is going to be a little change of pace, and it's not a real difficult thing. I think it's actually relatively good to look at. It's only a one page of notes, and uh, relatively simple, in my opinion, if you go through it appropriately. Okay, so uh, let's do this. Insert, no, math, graph, Cartesian, one, two, three, four, five. There you go. So I'm going to try and draw the picture that's represented on yours best I can. So it looks like at one, I have a dot here. One, two, three, I have a dot about here. Two, two, I have a dot here. Did I, does that look okay? Mm -hmm. And then I went negative one, two. And then this goes back to one, two, three. Okay, so that's our original, yes? And this is some math graph. I don't know what the actual equation is that makes it, um, but that's our math graph that we're gonna work with. So we're gonna start doing transformations. Transformations mean things shift right, left, up, down, stretch, squeeze, and things like that. Yay. All right, so I'm gonna do the first one in blue. And let me do the transformation first, and then I'll give you the opportunity to change it. Okay, so x minus three. Anytime something is grouped in math, anything, anytime something's grouped in math, it's gonna shift right or left. And it, if it's grouped, it shifts the opposite direction. So this takes care of a left, right, shift, left and right, shift, okay? Because it's a negative three, this is gonna go right three. So let me just pause there for a moment. Let me let you absorb that for a moment, okay? So anytime you have something in parentheses or a square brackets, that means it's good, the graph itself is going to shift to the right or to the left, and it will shift the opposite way you would think. So because it's a minus 3, it means it's going to shift right 3. And it's only when it's grouped that it does that, okay? So what that means is this. I'm going to take each of my points, and I'm going to shift them right. 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. <clears throat> so that's what that's what happens with that. You see how it shifted? 
Go ahead and take a second and write down, jot down what you need to jot down. You see how I just moved in the right left direction? Did not go up or down at all, right? For some reason, it skips right to letter C. But I think we can handle this. Okay, so we have something that's grouped. Agreed? So which way is it going to shift? Left or right? Left. Left. How many? Two. Two. So this is a left two. And this right here is going to be an up three. What color was my original graph? Red or blue? Red. red. So I'm going to shift the red one. So I'm going to go left two, one, two, and up three. So that's where that point went. So left two and up three. Left two and up three. Left two, up three. Left two, up three. Can you see how the purple shifted is the shift of the red? Like that. Okay, letter D, we're going 2 times f at x. f at x happens to be the red graph. That 2, we're going to multiply all y parts by 2. If it's a 3, I'd multiply by 3, 4, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's think about what this point is right here. 3, comma, 0. Yes? 3 comma 0. If I multiply the y value by 2, what's 0 times 2? Zero. 0. So that's going to be right there still. Okay. This is 2 comma 2. So my y value is 2. So if I multiply 2 times 2, I get 4. This one's going to stay the same for the exact same reason this one. My y value here is 2. So this is going to come up to 4. My y value is 2. So it's going to come up here to 4. So watch what this one does. So it became taller. It became taller. All of my x values stayed the same. But my y values were all doubled because I had that 2 out front. Letter E, oops, letter E, we have F at negative X. Okay. So whatever value I plug in, my X value I plug in, I'm going to get, I'm going to do, See, I'm going to do this right in my head. I'm going to do it in my head. So what that's going to do is it's going to shift 
it's going to change the value of all of my x values. So make all x values negative. Okay? Or or opposite value. So if it was positive, it would become negative. If it was negative, it becomes positive. All right, so we still have our red there. Agree? So what's my x value here? What's my x value right here? Three, so it's going to be negative three. What's my x value here? One. So it's going to be negative one. What's my x value here? It's going to be negative two. What's my x value here? Negative one, so I can go to positive one. What's my x value here? Negative three, so I'm going to go to three. So it flipped it over the y-axis. Huh? I flipped it over the y-axis. So here's the y-axis. And then the last one is this. Negative f at x. So changes y values. Okay. So again, looking at my red, what's my y value right here on my red? Zero. So I'll make it ch change the sign. Won't well, stay zero. What's my y value here? Two. So it's going to be negative two. What's my y value here? Zero. So that stays as is. What is my y value here? Two. So it becomes negative two. And that's also negative two. Woo! Look at that. That's kind of pretty with all the colors. Did you get done with your quiz? I just have a question. Okay. So I'll let you kind of follow that a little bit. This is kind of heavy stuff right now. Um, Can I move off this screen? So, I have them all right. And then there's one little thing here that just says, hey, I have y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So, this changes the pattern graph. So it grows in the y direction. So if our pattern graph's one, three, five, that's fine. But if I have an a value, that's something else. You multiply a value times all that. And that also dictates the direction it opens. So if it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. OK, we've dealt with that so far. This is the x direction. This shifts if it's minus h, x minus h, right h, if it's x plus h, left h. And this shifts up or down. That's all it is. Okay? So your homework for this weekend. What do you say we just do a start and have you do just page 83? Yes, there's there are more pages to it, but if you do just page 83, I think you're going to get an okay start on this stuff, okay? 
Did everyone get done with that sleep serving? Zoe, were you able to find it? Yeah, it worked out. Okay, thanks for doing that. If you had a Chromebook, will you make sure it's